Mark Kenny is Chief Political Correspondent for Fairfax. He joins us now. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Chris. Um, Same-sex marriage is starting to become a very difficult political issue for Tony Abbott. Why is that? Well, it's difficult in the sense that there does appear to be a very strong kind of public groundswell of support for, for a change. We, of course, saw the, uh, the amazing result in Ireland recently where 62% of people in that quite conservative country supported it. Polls suggest that uh, a similar uh, wedge of the, or a similar slice of the Australian electorate would uh, support it here, perhaps even greater. So there is some pressure on for, uh, for a change. The question is how does Tony Abbott handle it because within his party, within both sides it's true to say there is some opposition to it, but within his party there's some very deep opposition to, uh, to a change. And Tony Abbott himself remains personally uh, committed to leaving the Marriage Act as it is. So, um, so it's turning into a bit of a test of wills. The right in the Liberal Party is concerned that uh, Tony Abbott has sort of tacitly given approval for a change that while he hasn't supported it himself he's, he's pretty much kind of given a nod and a wink to the inevitability of it and uh, so there's some pretty trenchant opposition mounting within his side of the, uh, of the political uh, uh, hemisphere. So take us inside the dynamics of the Liberal Party room how much is this issue and this sort of rearguard action, if I can d depict it like that, how much is that tied up with leadership? Well, I think it's a fair bit of it's tied up with leadership. We saw uh, during the, uh, the, 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 the sort of coup that wasn't in February when uh, there was a, uh, a move to have the spill of the leadership that um, Tony Abbott nearly lost that at that time. Now, he lost 39 votes. Uh, one of the stories we heard in the aftermath of that was that the uh, Conservative National Civic Council and perhaps the Australian Christian Lobby, but certainly the NCC, was involved in a, uh, in a letter writing campaign, an email sending campaign, and that MPs were left in uh, no doubt that if they were to support a change of leadership, given that uh, uh, change would likely have gone to the socially uh, progressive Malcolm Turnbull, that any MPs who supported that change would face uh, internal pressure for their pre-selection or internal pressure against them um, uh, during an election campaign. So um, it, it, this is very serious stuff and uh, within the Liberal Party uh, people take it, take it seriously. So boil that down, is it too far for me to say that if Tony Abbott wants to retain the leadership of the Liberal Party, retain the support of that Conservative side of the party, he needs to maintain the current position opposing same-sex marriage? Well, I don't know that you could say it's absolutely as certain as that. It depends uh, how this issue plays out. Uh, I, I think probably um, Abbott's best chance in terms of managing this issue is to allow a, a free vote of the Liberal Party room uh, and uh, therefore of the of Liberal MPs in the Parliament uh, as soon as possible to get this matter dealt with one way or the other because at the moment it's sort of within his gift to do so. The argument has always been that, well, look, uh, we'll, you know, we'll look at that. If the party room decides that it wants a free vote, then the party room will decide that. And uh, once there's a bill before the House that's coming up for a vote, you know, we'll confront that issue. The thing is, uh, as it becomes more and more likely that uh, that pressure for social change is there and that it will eventually come to a change, um, Tony Abbott is, uh, is seen to be the one who's holding that up and it becomes a, a, a sort of a judgment that he needs to make. Is he better off holding that up and allowing that resistance to build and those forces to organise, or is he better off just letting this get decided fairly quickly? So if it does move to a free vote, <coughs> I guess the question is how free is it for some members of the Liberal Party if they've got this, this sort of um, campaign on electorate level by groups such as the Australian Christian Lobby or the National Civic <coughs> Council? Well, I suppose, yeah, there's always an argument about that. How free are any MPs, really? They're all there sponsored by various interests on the Labor side, by, by unions and factions, and uh, there'd be some people in the Labor Party who'd, be, who'd come under a great deal of pressure from uh, conservative unions like the, uh, like the Shoppies Union to uh, hold the line against gay marriage as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's not exactly a uh, totally free democratic process we're talking about here, but uh, that's politics, I guess. So what do you make of this suggestion by the Howard era uh, Minister Peter Reith that there should instead be a plebiscite. That would, I guess, in one sense, take the pressure off, off Tony Abbott and, and, and Bill Shorten because it would be 
left to the Australian people, more or less, to decide, or at least give guidance. Well, that's that's right, and that's I think one of the arguments that Peter Reith is using that um, the, he's saying there doesn't seem any reason why politicians should be, you know, have the exclusive judgment about this. Um, that you know, many people have have opinions on it, and you might as well let the people decide it. And I think there's, you know, that, that's a that's an attractive argument in a lot of ways, and it may be attractive to Tony Abbott. The point about it is that in Ireland, for example, that was a constitutional change they needed to give effect to, so they had to have a referendum. If we were to do it here, it would, not, it would have no legal force. The vote itself would have no legal force. The parliament could ignore it if it chose to, or the parliament could give expression to it if it chose to. And presumably, because it would just be a plebiscite rather than a referendum, so presumably if we advance to that. If the parliament decides, look, we're going to let the people decide this, then you'd have to have a commitment from the major parties that they would observe the result of that of that plebiscite. So if a majority of people voted for a change, then the parliament would legislate accordingly. But as you say, the advantage for Tony Abbott of it is, in, in a sense, it does allow him to say, well, look, there's a you know there's a there's a sort of a social mood here that needs to be uh, needs to be respected. I'm not going to tell the Australian people uh, what to do on on something like this. I'm going to allow them to tell us what to do, and uh, it does remove from him that uh, immediate responsibility of having to make the decision. But you know my my view is that uh, it's called the House of Representatives for for a reason. The representatives need to decide this, and they need to do so fairly soon. I mean they claim to have the people's uh, ear on everything else, why not on this? OK, well, let's think then of the scenario when essentially nothing changes. There is no plebiscite, there is no move to a free vote or a conscience vote in the Liberal Party, and so nothing happens until the election. Um, so same-sex marriage doesn't go through the Parliament because the government has the numbers in the lower house. How much does it then become a potent electoral issue, say, for Labor trying to win the numbers in the lower house? You mean at an election time, is this likely to become a partisan issue? Yes. I think, it's, I think there's some potential for it because uh, quite clearly Bill Shorten has nailed his colours to the mast. He said that he's, he's for marriage equality. Uh, Tony Abbott is, is uh, for the traditional interpretation of marriage as reflected in the law at the moment. So to some extent, it's, uh, the, the, the two sides are on, on different sides of the argument as well. Uh, but of course there are very prominent Liberals like Malcolm Turnbull and a number of others who are in favour of uh, marriage equality as well. So it would be, it'd be blurred to some extent. But my question though is how risky would it be for Tony Abbott to allow the status quo to continue to an election where it's not resolved and it's put potentially a central issue in a general election campaign? Well. I don't think it's hugely risky for him because um, no one's really expecting Tony Abbott to become a sudden advocate for this kind of thing. It just looks bad because um, here we have a situation where the Liberal Party, a party which has always made such a virtue of the fact that its members are not bound and controlled in the way that the Labor Party is, uh, here we have the Liberal Party effectively uh, you know, wedded to a, a, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, to a particular position and it's a, it's a matter on which uh, a number of MPs feel extremely strongly and would like to reflect the social opinion of the day, would like to see a modernisation, uh, and uh, they're being denied it by the, by the use of this, uh, this governmental control. Now that's illiberal in, in its essence, and um, it doesn't really look good for the Liberal Party, but I guess you know, Tony Abbott's um, been on the, on the unpopular side of, of, of policies in the past and, and come out on top, and you, know, you might say climate change is one of those. Okay, Matt Kenny, thanks for your insights today. Thanks, Chris.